So NVIDIA recently announced their new RTX 40 series. Our highly anticipated NVIDIA Ada Lovelace GPU. The GeForce RTX 4090. A lot of the focus of the marketing is on ray tracing performance. Pushing the state-of-the-art graphics into the future takes an incredible amount of computational horsepower. And yeah, that's very cool and exciting. But that's not what I want to focus on today. What I'm more interested in personally is a lot less sexy. Um, it's deep learning super sampling. Ray tracing requires insane amounts of computation. But even with RT cores, frame rates were too low for games. We needed another breakthrough. Enter deep learning. So DLSS is basically using AI to upscale a game rendered image. So bumping it up from like 1080p to 4K without having to render it at 4K. So basically it's kind of like working smarter, not harder is kind of the logic behind it. And with the new 40 series GPUs, Nvidia sort of saying, you can get up to four times better performance with their new DLSS3, uh, which is impressive, which is impressive. But before I sort of pop into talking about the new tech, I think it's sort of interesting to see how it's developed over the years. So I'm from the first iteration of deep learning super sampling. Deep learning is the single most powerful computer technology that has come onto the scene in the last 30 years. Okay, so let's hop back to 2018. NVIDIA are announcing their new 20 series GPUs. And this is the first of RTX marketing its ray tracing. Hey, you fuck a bunch of bitches, but they still respect the women. He's a rolling, it's another. He just got the windows tinted, homie, stab me in the back. All that jazz. You, pro you, probably, you probably know all this. But the sleeper technology in this announcement is DLSS. It's, it's the tech that you need to basically give you playable frame rates in these new sort of high fidelity games. Bitch, I get high. Take a, uh, an image, lower resolution, say 1440p, and it creates this beautiful, beautiful image that's 4K. Okay, so DSS is upscaling a rendered image into a higher res image, but why does upscaling like a 1080p image up to a 4K image, you know, why, why is that less intensive on a GPU than just rendering straight native 4K? I kind of like to think of it like rendering a frame for your, for your game is like measuring, measuring a room. Imagine you had to go around this room and you had to measure every length Every, any, every sort of like light source you have to you have to measure with like a, a special light meter. You write this all down and you, you take all note of little, every little detail. Think how long that'll take you. And now think how long that would take to do for a room four times the size. It's gonna, it's gonna take a lot longer. It's, gonna, it's just gonna take a lot longer. And what would be easier if you just measured a room this size and had a little bit of information which told you, oh, if it's X length, just convert it to Y length and have that for all the information needed. So yeah, that information is all calculated with an AI NVIDIA has trained. There's a bunch of supercomputers that's training these models. And the, and the graphics card, here's one. You guys know what a graphics card looks like, right? Here's one, available retail, $68,000. Now, your everyday consumer knows NVIDIA for their GPUs and all, all their gaming stuff, but their technologies are also applied on fields like medical stuff and, and transport stuff. And at the heart of it all is AI. That system has two of these inside. This is one petaflops, that's another petaflop, mother, another, not motherboard, but mother of, God, it's heavy, um, <laughs> GPU. And so we use this to train the neural network model. And now it's, it's 2022. I don't, I don't have to tell you what AI is or what it's capable of. You, you know all that. But what I want to touch on is a technology NVIDIA developed way back when, I think it was 2018. NVIDIA release this new sort of photo reconstruction AI. And, uh, NVIDIA researchers showed us some incredible results obtained by using a convolutional neural network to fix damaged photographs. And it's just, you've, you've kind of seen this. This is kind of widely available now, but it's this sort of image analysis 
and then reconstruction is kind of what formed the base of how can we use this for gaming? How are we going to use this to upscale images? So yeah, how on earth does Nvidia train a computer to upscale an image? How does it do that? So for DLSS 1, it took thousands of screenshots for a game and then took those exact same screenshots at 64 times the size. That's big. And then it would hand these two files to the computer and go, okay, work out the difference between these two and then sort of work out a formula to get one to the other. Just, just figure that out. And the AI did. It just, it just did it. Okay, it said, okay, I've got an image this size. To make it bigger, I need to kind of make it look like this. And so as this is trained per game, that little packet of information on a per game basis for DLSS is sort of packaged together and then shipped off to you and given to you in, in forms of driver updates and things like that. So you don't need a supercomputer to run the upscaling. The price point is slightly out of reach for most gamers. 3,000 easy payments of 1995. 3,000 easy payments will throw in the first game for free. The information, the learning's already there. Your computer just gets a little cheat sheet of how to do it. And hey presto, your little gaming PC can do some, some big old AI magic. So yeah, this AI sort of trains itself to become c close enough for upscaling. It's not great. There's a lot of like artifacts that happen and like fine textures, just they're, they're gone. You're not even gonna be able to see them sort of thing. And because you're having to train this AI on a per game basis, it's very costly, it is very costly. And so, yeah, it's a great start, but we're gonna have to start from square one, basically. We're gonna have to rethink this process. So yeah, introduce TLSS 2. Reworked basically from the ground up, using, using the same premise, but rebuilding that whole architecture. So now for DLSS 2, we have two sources of input. Rather than just the one image, we have your standard low res 1080p render. Yep. But then we also have this new motion data, little vector information of where all the colors are moving, where all the pixels are moving. So the AI takes your 1080p image, upscales it up to 4K, but then it can take that 4K render that it's done and feed that back into the motion data. And now it can say, okay, I know where the pixel colors should be moving. I'll translate that from this 4K image and then cross compose it with this low res image to make sure it looks right. And so they call this, this, this system, this new system, like a, a temporal feedback thing. Um, what exactly do they call it? Yeah, they call it temporal feedback. They don't call it a temporal feedback thing. They just call it temporal feedback. Basically having two sources of information makes it a lot better and more reliable to render a frame. And, and now this quality of the image is, is so much better. So you're not relying on upscaling just the 1080p image. You have the, the higher res image, which you put into motion data. So the quality of the image has improved significantly. Apps, it's just, Amazing, it's amazing now. And also, it's no longer having to be trained on a per game basis, which is pretty incredible. DLSS3, we're here. It's 2022, we have the RTX 40 series GPUs, and we have this new flashy technology DLSS 3. It's, um, it's quite interesting. So we have our process of DLSS 2 upscaling a 1080p image. We have a 4K output. We're cross feeding that with some motion data. And we're, we're continuing to get our upscaled output. But now DLSS 3 has an extra step of between these rendered frames, it's rendering a fully new, completely AI generated frame. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, but it's also not new technology. So I've actually been using this tech for, for a while in video editing. This chair is so squeaky, man. <laughs> so say I've got a video that is 25 frames per second, and I want to slow that down for double the duration. So now it's playing back at 
12.5 frames per second. If I want that playback to look like it's 25 frames per second, I need more frames. And you can generate those frames using AI, using optical flow. And what this does is it takes frame A and it takes frame B, it looks at them and merge, kind of merges them together, finds a middle ground to generate an in-between frame. That is what optical flow is. And so now what NVIDIA is doing is using that technology, but putting it into sort of a, a game situation. That's basically what it is. It's not new, but it is very interesting. Now, this technology isn't perfect. Um, it can lead to a lot of artifacting, finding differences between two frames can, can be messy. And at lower frame rates, like at 25 FPS, there's a lot of motion that's gonna be happening between these two frames and that middle picture may become a bit gross. You may have also seen the technology in, in TVs where they have like action mode or motion plus. And that is essentially doing the same thing is it's adding extra frames in where there shouldn't be frames and it kind of makes it look. The unfortunate side effect is that it makes most movies look like they were shot on high speed video rather than film. If you own a modern high definition television, there's a good chance you're not watching movies the way the filmmakers intended. However, gameplay stuff, this is where it should be. You have a lot of frames already, and so the motion between each frame shouldn't be as much as like 25 FPS. You're gonna have a lot more information, so the artifacting shouldn't be as bad in theory, but time will tell. Time will tell on this. Basically because this technology is so new, we don't actually know how bad it's gonna be or, or how good it's gonna be. It, no one's really got hands on testing yet. So I'm, I'm curious to see how it's, how it's gonna turn out artifacting wise. The other issue with this sort of adding more frames in is the game has to wait to render the next frame of a game before it can generate that middle frame. And that means you're gonna have input lag. You're just, you're just gonna have input lag. There's no, there's no work around that. It's more work for your computer to do. Yes, it's higher frame rates, but what's the trade-off then? How much input lag are you willing to sacrifice for higher frames, which is actually more important for playing a game? We'll, we'll, we'll see on that. Um, Nvidia are trying to sort of counter this developing technologies to help lower game latency. So yeah, in time we'll know whether having extra AI generated frames is actually going to be beneficial for playing the game and whether their marketing of beyond fast will actually be beyond fast.